The Capitals' winning streak grinds to a halt in Toronto. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about how the Capitals winning streak comes grinding to a halt in Toronto as the Capitals get leafed again. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I will talk about how even Charlie Lindgren couldn't bail the Capitals out of this game. And then a little bit later, we will talk about the road ahead. Uh, listen, the Capitals have got to brush their shoulders off. They can't dwell on this failure. They've got to be ready for Boston. But just to get it going here, we will talk about the game tonight where the Capitals simply got outworked. There's no ands, ifs, or buts, and it kind of reminds me to a certain extent of the game that they played against the Maple Leafs the last time where it was a really lopsided loss. Kind of the same thing, except this game was in Toronto, so the Capitals uh, have lost every game they've played against the Maple Leafs this season. It's a bit interesting that they've had kind of a rough schedule, but this is the team that has given them the most problems. Uh, I say, you know, interesting because they have played what I perceive better teams uh, and the Capitals have had better luck, but for whatever reason, the Capitals have struggled against the Maple Leafs. And uh, again, you know, it's just getting ready for the next one as the Capitals take on the Bruins this weekend. All good things must come to an end. That's what they say, right? Anyway, well, the Capitals winning streak ended tonight after they fall again to the Maple Leafs, this time in Toronto by a score of five to one. Nick Dowd was the only one that was able to find the back of the net with a deflection. And uh, you know, it's interesting that the Capitals greatly got outshot this entire game, but even in the first period that I still thought that they were in it until, you know, the wheel really started to fall off. I thought the Capitals would catch a break here, that they would catch a lucky bounce some way. It just wasn't the case. Uh, their netminder was too dialed in and the Capitals defense uh, was under duress and they could not stand up to the heavy weaponry that the Maple Leafs have. But this is a good test for this team. Uh, if they can walk away from this game learning something, uh, then I guess it's not a total loss. But with that said, you think they would have learned something the two other times they played them this season. So uh, a tough thing for the Capitals. Hopefully they can turn it around. The Caps weren't bad in the first period. Uh, I mean, they were getting outshot. But there, like I said, there were things about it that made me feel they could get away back in there. The Maple Leafs were just better for the entire game. Uh, and, you know, when you have elite goal scoring and some truly upper echelon players, sometimes that's the case. But if we kind of take the face off the clock and look at the gears, uh, we'll just take a look at some of the ins and outs of the game penalties. Uh, the uh, Maple Leafs had two, the Capitals won. Uh, if we took take a look at saves, Charlie Lindgren saved 43 uh, the Maple Leafs saved 23. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs out hit the Capitals 12 to 3. Uh, and faceoffs won 
35 Toronto 20 Capitals. So they got outworked. And sometimes when you get outworked that way, it's difficult. But taking a look at the players and who contributed on the team, uh, you take a look at the many big name players out there. And it wasn't even necessarily the biggest names out there. Austin Matthews was there. Uh, you have Nylander, uh, Tavares, those kind of players. Uh, but it wasn't their upper echelon marquee names that were getting it done for the Maple Leafs. And they still found a way to get it done. And their net Netminder at Wall was engaged. Uh, they had a hard time sneaking anything past him except for the one deflection. So, uh, you know, it's one of the things that you there's enough videotape out there. There's enough pre-scouting. There's enough video coaches that you think the Capitals would have found a way to, you know, develop countermeasures to try to stymie the plays that the Maple Leafs were throwing at the Capitals. Not the case. The Caps were outshot 19 to 9 in the first period and 48 to 25 overall. A lopsided would be an understatement. There were moments in the first that I thought the Capitals were going to get in there, but they were outshot. But I thought somehow, some way, they would catch a lucky bounce. Uh, to, you know, Spencer Carberry was aware that the Capitals were getting outworked and he tried to do something to jumpstart. The, the scoring out there at the end of the day. So if we take a look at the lines out there, it was Ovechkin, McMichael, Oshie on the top line, Pacioretty, Strom, and Mirishnyshenko on the second line, Protus, LaPierre, Scarbosa on the third, Malenstein, Dowd, and Abe Kubel on the fourth line. But that is where things changed up. He tried to jumpstart the offense. LaPierre moved to the top line with Ovechkin. Connor McMichael moved to the wing to play with Dylan Strom and Protus. Nick Dowd also moved up to play with Patch Reddy, Scarbosa, centered Malenstein, and Abe Kubel. And it's a good thing. You know, I'm glad that he tried to do what he could do. Uh, Spencer Carberry, that is, to try to get it done. Sometimes these coaches kind of dig their heels in and they're like, nope, this is the way I laid it out. This is the way it's going to be. Um, but it just, it wasn't enough there. They just didn't have the, the it tonight. They didn't, they didn't have a way to penetrate uh, the Maple Leafs defense. And, you know, uh, the biggest problem for the Capitals was their defense. And in the next segment, I'll talk about Charlie Lindgren, but uh, it, I think it was another one of those cases where the Capitals were kind of in fight or flight mode that they remember the script uh, when they're playing well, but then when they struggle, it's just like, you know, trying to, it's like they have a paper bag over their head and they're flailing at their opponent. You know, I'm going to get you somehow. Uh, it was just not the case. Um, and, and, you know, the interesting thing is we've seen them uh, overcome here in the past. You know, most notably, I think about the Jets. I think about the Hurricanes. Uh, those kind of games where they found a way to overcome. So, you know, even going into the third period, I, I look at it and I thought, you know, this game, is really lopsided, but maybe the, there's a way that they can find a way to make it back in there, but it just wasn't the case for the Capitals tonight. Alex Ovechkin was engaged, uh, at least to start the game with a physical presence, and, you know, that kind of set the tone for the Capitals. When he was doing that, That in my mind, that's when I thought the Capitals are going to get something going here. Alex Ovechkin is that bull in the china shop. He's the guy that's stepping up and playing that physical game uh, in the absence of Tom Wilson. And, you know, that's another player that comes into focus that Tom Wilson missing from the lineup uh, was noticeable. And, uh, you know, one of the things people said is the Capitals are missing Tom Wilson, and I agree with that, but he also has a lot of pin minutes, and sometimes that's detrimental when he's in the penalty box. But hopefully the Capitals here soon, uh, you know, once uh, Tom Wilson and Sonny Milano return, they can get it back going where they need it to be. Because tonight was rough. Uh, I was hoping that tonight was going to be the night that the Capitals could find a way to finally, you know, beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. I knew it was going to be a tough task, but a lot of the games here recently have been. It just wasn't the case for the Capitals tonight. All right, so coming up here, I will talk about Charlie Lindgren. That all season, he's bailed the Capitals out. And ultimately, you know, I think the game tonight would have been, you know, much further out of hand if it wasn't for him. But Charlie Lindgren couldn't put on the Superman cape and save the Capitals tonight. I'll discuss straight ahead.
Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to you as customers Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all the all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So if there's one thing that Charlie Lindgren has done this entire season, it's bail the Capitals out night in and night out. He's been that consistent brick wall in net, but he couldn't do it tonight. Uh, as we remember the start of the season, it was Darcy Camper was going to be the number one netminder, and then he struggled. Uh, statistically speaking, he's had one of his worst seasons in his career. So Charlie Lindgren, a bit of an unproven commodity before this season, uh, say, has saved the Capitals' day you know, many different times and this season in a lot of ways. Listen, if we take a look back to last season, We remember what he did in December, and then he faded, but he's a different man, a different goaltender this season. He has been the rock for the Capitals, but he struggled tonight, and ultimately it was because of the players around him. Uh, Listen, Lindgren did what he could do, and I don't fault him for many of the goals tonight. Lindgren got his 13th start in 15 games. And uh, this is something I will talk about in an upcoming podcast is the net minding situation for the Capitals. Uh, we do know that it's Charlie Lindgren as the number one. And the number two is Darcy Kemper. Uh, as a Capitals fan, how concerned are you with Darcy Kemper being at the number two, considering how he's played, let's say, his last two games? Because we know at some point, Charlie Lindgren is going to need a break. He could get injured. Worst case scenarios, what will the Capitals do? Uh, Will they venture into uh, the AHL and call up Hunter Shepard or Clay Stevenson? Stay tuned as that will be a topic of an upcoming podcast. But much like I've spoken about, the Caps left him waving in the wind and a man on an island in the crease. Uh, it It was a tough thing. You know, he made a lot of 10 bell saves. He was sprawled out. Uh, you know, and the one time he was sprawled, he went all the way uh, over to the left with his legs apart and the, it, the puck still squirted by him. Uh, the one thing I know about Charlie Lindgren for sure is there's a lot about his game that reminds me of Braden Holpe. Uh, like I've talked about, I will always revere Braden Holpe as the best of the best for the Capitals. Some people would argue and say it could be a different netminder, but for me, he was the best of the best. And if one of the things that we remember, if we can remember back to 2018 is that the Capitals needed a really great tandem at the time. It was Philip Grubauer and Braden Holpe because Braden Holpe started to falter later in the year that Grubauer came in, was red hot. And by the time they made it to the Stanley cup, Braden Holpe was rested and the rest is a Cinderella story. So uh, Charlie Lindgren has been the guy for the Capitals all season And, uh, you know, he tries to, on a night-in, night-out basis, save the Capitals, but the Capitals are not doing uh, Charlie Lindgren any favors uh, by missing assignments, uh, miscues, uh, coughing up the puck. Those all led to 
the goals of tonight. It wasn't, you know, a Darcy Kemper where he put his glove out and the puck went wide where, you know, you could tell Darcy's uh, mitt was just out of position. Uh, it's just that, you know, I looked at the game. Charlie Lingren was in the right position. It's just, you know, the defense was not in lockstep uh, with what the Maple Leafs were throwing at the Capitals. It just wasn't. It was disjointed and at a lot of different times in this game tonight was quite ugly. Uh, Charlie, despite the heavy workload and what you see in the box scored, played well stopping 37 of 48. And some people would say, well, Dan, you're talking about the Capitals and Charlie Lindgren with Capitals colored glasses on. I mean, did you not see the box score? They lost five to one. I get all that. Uh, but if you've been listening or watching to this entire podcast, you know what I said there, that, you know, Charlie Lindgren, I'm not going to absolve him from all guilt. Uh, but what I'm going to say is that the Capitals defense and the players, the forwards, they did no favors to Charlie Lindgren tonight to help bail him out. Uh, and it's one of the things, the Capitals blue line in particular, um, and, you know, it, it's tough. I know the Maple Leafs are a tough team, but that is what the teams that the Capitals are going to face uh, as they make their push to the playoffs. Could you imagine if they made it to the playoffs and the first round was a team uh, similar to the Toronto Maple Leafs? They would struggle. Uh, so the Capitals, uh, I don't think it's impossible. I mean, let's look at what they've done here recently against the Jets, against the Red Wings, um, that I'm not saying it's impossible. But what I'm going to say is that they need to be in, you know, tuned in and what's going on and ultimately adhere to the script even when they're under duress. Uh, he was huge when he needed to be considering the Leafs' weapons uh, and could have the score could have had even been more lopsided had Charlie not been in the net. Um, and I don't have to think about that for a second. I think that the Capitals, you know, got lucky in a lot of ways that it was five to one. I think that if it was a far less net minder, we could have been talking about an eight or nine uh, goal night for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So uh, all things considered, the Capitals uh, have got to get this together as this is crunch time. There is not a lot of games left to play. And, you know, they're in a pretty good position uh, to be in the playoffs. I mean, if unless they totally fall off, I do see the Capitals making it to the playoffs. It's just these kind of sleeper teams. You know, you know when I say sleeper, I know the Toronto Maple Leafs, but I don't think that the Capitals necessarily had the Maple Leafs circled as a team that they were going to struggle with so much, considering that they took down big opponents in the Hurricanes, the Canucks, uh, those kind of things, uh, the Red Wings. Um, that this team would give them so many fits, but they have. That's what the Capitals need to be prepared for. They need to do their level best to help Charlie out. Charlie goes out of his way to make saves that most any other netminder in the NHL wouldn't save. Let's do him a solid and, and help bail him out when he needs it. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about the road ahead for the Capitals. Uh, it's a loss. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to win them all. It's just close-minded to think that you're going to win every single game. It's, it's, it's just not the way life works. So the Capitals need to, you know, brush off this loss and get ready for the next one. What lies ahead for the Capitals? I'll discuss straight ahead. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So it's, sometimes it's easier to dwell on losses than it is victory. Oftentimes when a, your team wins, you're dismissive and you're like, well, they, you know, they won, but they got lucky. Or, you know, even if we take a look at the last game, they won, but I wish it didn't have to go to overtime uh, uh, why not just be happy that they won? I understand that in an ideal situation, uh, these games wouldn't require overtime or the shootout, that it's easy to be dismissive of a victory, but you know, wallow in defeat. It's easier. It's you know the, the, the adage, misery loves company, that kind of thing. So despite the fact that the Capitals lost tonight, I'm not down on the Caps by any means. Um, you know, anything that you do in life, you apply for a job, you're not going to get them all. Uh, if you ask a person out on a date, not every one of them is going to say yes that you can't dwell on things that don't go your way. You need to look at the situation, address it, and say, hey, 
maybe I could have handled it different this way or that way. The same is true for sports and more specifically the Capitals. We've talked about in this episode, I've talked about in this episode about what went wrong and uh, are there countermeasures, are there plans in place if the Capitals face a team like the Maple Leafs again? Because listen, Saturday the Capitals take on the Bruins who are in first place. And that's not going to be an easy out either. Uh, The Bruins are really good, and I understand that the Capitals beat them last time, but you don't want to go into a situation saying, hey, we beat them last time. We can beat them again. It's good to be confident. I don't want a defeated feeling, but I don't want, you know, a cockiness. Uh, That is when you will get yourself in trouble. Confidence is always a great thing, but underestimating your opponent is a recipe for failure. Uh, So I think that, you know, you take a look at the loss tonight. Let's forget about it. You know, if you want to take a look at the videotape, uh, the players, that is the coaches, you know, you can say circle this, what was going on here, what was going on there and try to address it. That's a good thing, but be ready for your next opponent. They have the Bruins. uh, They have the Sabres coming up next, and those are going to be two tough teams. And you might be saying the Sabres, they're not that great this year, Dan. Well, again, you don't want to fall into a trap game. So before we get down in the dumps, let's reflect here a little bit about what the Capitals have done. Uh, Let's just rewind tape a little bit to the beginning of March. You take a look at two big wins coming off a loss to the Coyotes. The Capitals lost to the Coyotes in what I'm going to go ahead and say a low water mark for this team on March 3rd by a score of 5-2. to two. But then what happened? The Capitals, in a stunning victory, take down the Penguins by a score of 6 to nothing. The Capitals take down the Blackhawks by a score of 4-1. to one. They stumble a little bit as they start their West Coast road trip as they fall to the Jets 3 to nothing. They fall to the Oilers 7-2. to two. But then they start ratcheting it up. They take down the Kraken 2-1. to one. Canucks by a score of 2-1. to one. That was a season-defining moment and a true momentum builder. And then they kept rolling. They took down the Flames by a score of 5-2. to two. And then their Achilles heel, the Maple Leafs, they fall by a score of 7-3. to three. Never the defeated team. It could have easily spiraled out of control. The Capitals did the improbable by taking down the Red Wings by a score of 4-3. Uh, to three. Um And they just kept rolling and they kept doing it. Uh, And then you take a look at the game tonight and they fall five to one. But, you know, the games before, sorry, my screen got caught up there. You take a look at it. They got, they took down the Hurricanes by a score of seven to six. They take down the Jets by a score of three to nothing. Two teams that they struggled with the previous time they played them. So, uh, you, you know, you can talk about, you know, getting stuck in ruts and this and that kind of thing. The Capitals are a good enough team that they can find a way to overcome. So despite the fact that the Capitals played the Jets and the first time they played them, they lost. They found a way to beat them the second time. Same thing goes for the Red Wings. So sometimes it's not always, you know, just history repeating itself in some sort of Groundhog Day situation. So I think the Capitals are in a pretty good position. Let's take a look at the schedule ahead. Again, I spoke of they take on the Bruins on Saturday, the Sabres on Tuesday, and then it's going to be a showdown shootout, make no mistake about it, as the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be out for blood. Uh, They take on the Penguins on April 4th, Caps Pens April 4th, and then the rematch against the Carolina Hurricanes. That is going to be a tough one. The Hurricanes are going to be coming out with both barrels. Let's keep rolling here as there are not a lot of games less. They take on the Senators, which are not the best team, and then another rematch against the Red Wings on April 9th. They got the Sabres on the 11th, the Lightning on the 13th, Another game against the Bruins on the 15th and the Flyers on the 16th. That concludes the regular season. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the games ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and say the Capitals are going to find a way to take down the Bruins. I really do. I think that they've got them dialed in. I think that the Sabres are going to uh, give the Capitals a little bit more problems than they anticipated. And then we take a look at the Penguins. Uh, They are a team that still wants to fight. They want to show that they still have a place in it. The Hurricanes are not going to be an easy out either. So the the road ahead for the Capitals is not going to be an easy one. Uh, If you are 
an every day of the show, you know that oftentimes you will circle which games mentally, maybe subconsciously, you think they're going to win and which ones you think they're going to lose. You know, I'd like to think that the Capitals for sure will beat the Senators. I, I want to think that's going to be the case. But then there's some games where I'm just not so sure. The Capitals taking on the Red Wings on April 9th again, kind of a question mark. Uh, I guess I don't know, but you know, to conclude the season, to wrap it up on April 15th and 16th is going to be some must see TV for the Capitals taking on the Bruins and taking on the Flyers, two teams uh, that, you know, the Bruins have it locked down, but the Flyers are still trying to fight uh, for position as well. So taking a look at, you know, the schedule, let's take a look at the past. Like I looked at the Capitals have faced adversity before. But what's different about this year's Capitals team over previous uh, Capitals seasons, let's say last year in particular, is that it's not going to spiral out of control. Or let's not even go that far back. Let's take a look at the Capitals from earlier this season, where it seemed like if they lost one game, then it would spiral out and they would lose two or three games. That there is some resolve, there is some pushback from this team and uh, to any of the people out there that are doubting this team a little bit because they lost the game tonight against the Maple Leafs, I just got done talking about games where they lost, you know, a game and then they picked up two big wins or three wins against teams that on paper were at least better than the Capitals. So I do think they have what it takes to take down the Bruins. Um, and again, like I've talked about, I stand by my statement right now regardless of how they played tonight, that there's still not a team in the NHL that I'm uh, afraid for the Capitals to face. And some people might say, really? How about the Maple Leafs? Still, the Maple Leafs, if the Capitals face the Maple Leafs again, I think that they could still find a way to rally it despite how they've played against them this year. Um, it's just finding the right hockey because, you know, if you listen to the premier insiders, they're like, how are the Capitals getting this done? This is statistically impossible that this old team is getting it done. Uh, like I've talked about on this show, that you still got great playmakers out there like TJ Oshie. Alex Ovechkin is still a premier talent. John Carlson, one of the best blue liners to ever do it and is on the Capitals, not to mention... Uh, we have a netminder in, in between the pipes and Charlie Lindgren that is the envy of a lot of different other teams around the NHL. Not to mention, you know, what Brian McClellan did is he threw a changeup when the other team was looking for a fastball and swing and a miss. That's what's tripping up a lot of the other teams out there. So, you know, you take a look at uh, the additions of LaPierre, Mirshnashenko, Connor McMichael, Beck Malenstein, Scarbosa, these kind of players that those aren't players that necessarily I think that a lot of other, uh, you know, insiders were aware of. They might have been, you know, familiar with the name, but who, you know, did you anticipate Connor McMichael or Hendricks LaPierre being game changers? They've been just that because they've added that extra speed to this team, a good skill set. We've seen true flashes of greatness and, you know, sustained flashes, if you will, from Connor McMichael and Hendricks LaPierre who in previous years, it faded in a hurry. So it's interesting. And I guess what I'm trying to tell you, Capitals fans, is let's not get down in the dumps because they lost tonight. Again, you're not going to win them all. And the team has shown resolve all season. Even if they lost a big one, they can then turn it around and win big ones. I think the Capitals are still in the hunt. And as it stands right now towards the tail end of March, I think this team is in a good position to make it to the playoffs and, dare I say, a good push. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful when you're done here head on over to locked on's 24 7 streaming channel available on youtube or the free amazon fire tv channels app all right once again i want to thank you for joining me on this edition of locked on capitals part of the locked on podcast network your team every day my name is dan holney and i'll talk to you again next time